Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of Kenny's Cantina. My semester of teaching is over, another one for the book. The leaves are finally out here in Pennsylvania. Man, it took a while. In celebration of the nice weather, it's time to prepare a quick, simple, no cooking involved dish, pimento cheese. Nothing says the South like pimento cheese. From classic pimento cheese sandwiches at the Masters Tournament, the pimento cheese mac, this quick, easy, and tasty cheese spread will light up lots of dishes. The minnow cheese has been around since the late 1800s, but it really took off after a 1908 recipe for pimento cheese sandwiches appeared in Good Housekeeping magazine. There have been lots of takes on pimento cheese since that 1908 recipe, and it's just not for sandwiches anymore. My pimento cheese is super rich, and it's a big hit with all my tasters around the RV park. Kids love it, as do adults, and I know you will too. So the prep time on this, it takes about 20 minutes to make, no cooking involved, and it'll serve six to eight people, and you can store this in the refrigerator for about a week. You don't really want to freeze this dish because of the cream cheese. For the ingredients, you're going to need eight ounces of cream cheese, two cups of extra sharp cheddar grated, two cups of smoked Gouda cheese grated, one cup of mayonnaise, two four ounce jars of diced pimentos strained, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder, one and a half teaspoons of paprika, a pinch of salt, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. So preparation on this, First off, you want to start off by softening your cream cheese. This will make mixing the other ingredients easier. So I've had my cream cheese out softening for about an hour, and I'm going to put that into my mixing bowl. And so then I'm going to kind of squish it around some, kind of flatten it out, make sure it's soft. Okay, that's looking good. And I'm going to get my cheese grater out, and I'm going to start off with the extra sharp cheddar. And I'm going to grate that. And I use the big holes on the cheese grater for this. All right. Get that out. Get all of it out on the inside. And I'm going to take my measuring cup and pile the cheese in. Good. That's two cups. And let me add that to the mixing bowl. And then I'm going to mix that up. When you're this first pass of mixing, it's it's a little tougher to do. That cream cheese takes a little bit to loosen up. But we're going to get that good and mixed in together. All right. Next is time for the smoked Gouda. Let me grate this. And I really like using smoked Gouda in this. It really gives the pimento cheese a different flavor than you normally get. And it is that smokiness makes it really, really rich. All right, so I got that grated, and that's two cups. And let me add it to the mixing bowl. And here again, I'm going to mix that in real good. And there we go. And let's get the mayonnaise out. And just take a one cup measuring cup, put that in it. All right, we got that. And let's add that into the mixing bowl with the cheeses and mix this all up. And the mayo makes it easier to mix it all up. And that's getting it really good. Flip that over. There we go. All right. Now, the next ingredient is the diced pimentos. So I'm going to open those up and pour into my strainer. Second jar. All right, let me shake this out. You definitely want to drain this pimento cheese. Otherwise, that juice will just make pimento cheese way too runny. So let me put that in. Mix that up good. All right, now to add the spices. And I'm going to start off with the garlic powder. Let me measure that out. All right, and then I'm going to mix again. And I like mixing between each spice that I add that makes sure it gets all the way through and mixed up good. So next is the onion powder. Let me add that. All right. Mix. Do a lot of mixing, but like I said, there's no cooking with this one. All right. 
Now the paprika. And that paprika is going to add a little color and a little bit of flavor to the dish. Mix that up, blending it up. Now I'm just going to take my salt grinder and do a dash of salt. Let me do three or four twirls there with the salt grinder. Mix that. That makes good. And now I'm going to take my Worcestershire sauce and add that. And here again, I'm going to mix it in. Now, this is going to be my final mix. So I want to make sure that I mix it really good. We are done pretty quick, right? I say 20 minutes at the start, but it, it's it's a pretty quick dish to make. So now let me grab a cracker and take a taste. Spoon a little of this up on here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh man, it's got a very rich taste that comes from that smoked gouda, and you pick up the subtle taste of the spices and the tomato. That works. That's going to be good. So now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a Tupperware and seal it and let it sit in the refrigerator. So let me scoop this in, lick the spatula for good measure. Don't want any of that to go to waste. Okay, I'm going to cover this now. And I'm going to put this in the refrigerator Find a spot, okay. And I'm gonna let that chill for two hours. And what that chilling does is it allows all those spices and the cheeses to all blend together. And after uh, chilling, you're ready to enjoy this great cheese spread. So now serving recommendations for this, you can serve this as an appetizer on crackers. It's a great snack. I like it on a pimento cheese sandwich. When you heat it up and you're grilling that pimento cheese sandwich, it makes it a really interesting gooey sandwich. And it's so rich when, when you heat up that pimento cheese. You can also liven up a bacon burger for a rich, cheesy taste. I recently had a buddy over, and I, we cooked burgers, and we used the pimento cheese on that. His comment was, this is the best cheeseburger he's ever had. So keep that in mind. It's great on that. You can also spice things up and make pimento cheese stuffed uh, jalapeno poppers. So just slice them open, clean out the seeds, put some pimento cheese in, close it back up, wrap bacon around it, and throw it on the grill. And that's a really tasty dish as well. And then picnics and hikes are great when you pack along some pimento cheese sandwiches. You can either do just straight pimento cheese, or you can put it, I like to put it on top of ham with lettuce and tomato and avocado. You can't beat it. It's a great sandwich while you're out there hiking or for a picnic. If you're throwing a party, you can always use pimento cheese to make great finger sandwiches. So just spread it on some wheat and white bread and fold those over and slice them and you can stack those up and you've got great finger sandwiches. At the holidays, my mom always used to spread it on celery at Thanksgiving and Christmas and we'd use that as an appetizer on holidays, but it's also great for a late night snack just add a little cream cheese to your celery. So that's good. And then now an interesting take is mac and cheese. This really kicks it up a notch. So you can cook your noodles, add your pimento cheese, add a little heavy cream to get it a little richer and smoother. And then what I like to do is throw in some bacon bits for some added flavor. And that is really good. So tips with this dish. Be sure and soften your cream cheese. It makes it so much easier to blend everything. When you mix between each ingredient, that ensures a consistent flavor throughout the spread. And then chilling the pimento cheese prior to serving is key. That process allows the flavors to blend and it allows time for the cream cheese to harden back up some. This makes for a ro more robust, thick spread. I recommend at least two hours. Overnight is better, so make it up a day ahead of time.
but hey, be creative. Put on, try it on whatever you want to put it on and give it a whirl. So enjoy your pimento cheese. The last episode of Kenny's Cantina was my Texas Red Chili. I received some great questions, so let's get to the mail. Mark from San Antonio asks, is it true that chili con carne was developed in San Antonio in my home state? I love San Antonio, Mark. You're correct. According to Texas Monthly, it all began with Mexican women selling chili con carne on the streets of San Antonio. Hey, take a stroll on the river walk for me, and thanks for watching, Mark. Keith from New Hampshire asks, why does Texas chili have no beans? Up here, I always use kidney beans in my chili. Hey, Keith, thanks for your questions. Beans or no beans? That's the question. The lack of beans in Texas chili is found in the roots of the original dish. Chili con carne translates to chili with me. And chili queens would prepare their meat stewed with chilies and sell it as a street food. These chili queens did not add beans to their dish. So traditional Texas chili does not have the bean. However, over time, beans have been added to recipes and some parts of countries think chili has to have beans to be chili. It's like that around here in Pennsylvania. So I add pinto beans, which are a common bean in Tex-Mex dishes in Texas. Kidney beans are more common bean up north. Great question, Keith. I love history. Now, Marcy from California asks, how long did it take you to perfect your recipe? And is this something that you got from other of a, from another recipe. Marcy, thanks for your question. I'm constantly perfecting and playing with my recipes. For my chili, I've been wa working on it for around 20 years. The core has been constant for the whole time, but sometimes I add or subtract some ingredient. Over the last year, 10 years, I've been entering a local chili cook-off and have been lucky enough to win more years than not. This is a great way to get feedback on my chili and make adjustments. I also make a green chicken chili that's popular as well. Typically when I try to prepare a new dish, I'll look at four or five recipes to determine the base ingredients and processes, and then I just create my own. So thanks for your question, Marcy, and for giving me an opportunity to discuss my process. Lucy from New Mexico and Monica from Louisiana asked about how I get the dark brown red color of the chili. The dark brown or red color comes from the dehydrated ancho chilies. The pureed anchos really add a dark hue to the dish. Another way you can redden the chili is to add some tomato paste. Just be aware that adding tomato paste will soften the chili taste some and add a little acidity to your chili. Thanks, Lucy and Monica. Bill from New York asked, where can I buy dried anchos? My grocery store doesn't carry them. Bill, this is an important question. If you can't find them in your local grocery store, you can order them on Amazon without any problem. Where I'm at, some great grocery stores have them, others don't. I can usually find them at an Aldi's Mexican grocery store that I go to here. And I was in an Asian international market the other day and found them there. So, Bill, order from Amazon or go on a tour of international grocery stores in your area. It's a blast. Cal from Wyoming asks, I noticed your chili looks firm, but when I make my chili, it turns out soupy. What am I doing wrong? Well, Hal, thanks for noticing the thickness of my chili. I pride myself on the consistency. There are a couple of things that you can do to get thicker chili. The first is leaving the pot uncovered when you're simmering the chili. This allows a lot of the moisture to evaporate. Secondly, I add corn masa as a thickening agent. You can also use wandra flour to help thicken the chili. Now, wandra flour is a quick dissolving flour that clumps less than using regular flour. So good question, Hal. Thanks for asking. Now, Cindy from Wisconsin says, I don't drink beer, and I noticed in one of your other videos that you created a drink called a Chihuahua. Do you think that will work with this meal? Also, can you come up with a beverage for the kids that would go good with this? Hey, Cindy, thanks for writing in. The Chihuahua will work with the chili, and thanks for watching that episode. As to the beverage for kids, you can make a Chihuahua without the vodka 
and it actually tastes exactly the same. So that's one alternative. Another possibility is aquas fresca. And that's a Mexican fruit juice-based drink, which would be good for the kids. I'll work on creating a recipe for aquas fresca and try to do an episode on it. Thanks for the idea, Cindy. Now, Janet from Kentucky asks, besides the use of steak, my husband wondered if wild game like deer meat or wild boar would be okay to use, or would it take away the beef taste that you incorporated in your dish? Janet, venison makes great chili. I know some people, they only make chili with venison. I'm not familiar with wild boar, but my research suggests that that'll work as well. So give it a try and let me know how it came out. Thanks for your interesting question, Janet. Uh, Jessica from Brazil asks, our native hot pepper here is called the Maglaueta pepper, and we use a lot of Catsium fruticens, which is a type of chili pepper along with some African spices. Just wondering if you've ever used or heard of these spices. If I use what we have here, would it taste much or maybe spicier than your dish? If you have any thoughts on this, I'd love to hear back from you. Thank you. Jessica, thanks for your question. I was not familiar with the peppers that you mentioned, but I looked them up. The Malagueta pepper and the Capsian Frusians peppers, of which Thai chilies fall into, are as much as 25 times hot as hot as jalapeno peppers. So I use some fresh jalapeno pepper in my chili. If you like hot stuff, you could replace the jalapeno with a malagueta pepper. It will add heat. I would do this along with keeping the other peppers I use. I think that'll help preserve the flavors. The anchos, the green chilies, the poblanos, et cetera, add a lot of flavor that is the core of a chili con carne, but they don't add a lasting heat to the taste. Some people like more spice heat than others, so I tend to go for the flavor and not make it too spicy. But hey, if you're used to spicy heat, Jessica, give it a whirl. Start small and then add more. Thanks for watching from Brazil. I really enjoyed your questions and doing the research to answer some of them. Please keep the questions and comments coming. Tony Chachere's Creole Seasoning sent me some of their spices to try and I used them to whip up some dirty rice. This is a tasty, quick, one-pot meal that's easy to make, so keep an eye out for dirty rice in my next episode. I want to thank all of you from around the world for tuning in to Kenny's Cantina. I really appreciate you. See all my recipes in my episodes at my website, kennyscantina.com. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, Kenny's Cantina wouldn't be possible with the help of my sponsors, IBC Production and the Road Hogs Media Network, so a big thanks to them. See you all on the road. 